I'm uh, delighted today, this being the very first C Connecting Through Sport Showcase, to invite our very first guest, Steve Dykeman, the president of the Maritime Hockey League, the MHL, to join us as the very first guest. Welcome, Steve. I'm glad you're able to join us today. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for having me, and thanks for choosing us as your inaugural uh, recording and uh, a Zoom meeting. Yeah, we'll be sharing this across all our uh, digital platforms, and that's uh, six of them. So we're going to make you a star by the end of the week, I would say, when we, uh, when we see the results on the social media platforms. Uh, again, thanks for doing it. Uh, we'll be uh, having a, a rather friendly chat around uh, what it's like in the great pause, as I've come to call it. In the 30s, our parents would have told us about the Great Depression, and, and certainly that is a is a name that has carried through history. So I'm calling this the great pause. And we'll, uh, we'll uh, uh, see how we come out of this one. Uh, but today I thought we'd be talk about the league a bit. C mm -hmm. is delighted, as you well know, Steve. The C is delighted to be a partner with the league. Uh, we value that partnership very much um, and uh, look forward to when we can round the corner and come out of this. So um, maybe the first thing they could touch on for us and those who are watching is tell us how the league is handling all its internal communications, how you've structured yourself with your staff um, and how you continue to have communications with your owners, your board of governors uh, in, that, uh, in that area. Sure, it's a good question, Chris, and one that, one that we, get, we get asked a lot. Um, it's funny, the, what this has done is really made us uh, communicate more with each other. Uh, we're meeting more frequently, um, both with our, with the executive from the league as well as the board of governors. Uh, with the board of governors, we're meeting weekly and or bi-weekly depending on the week and, and the topic. Uh, and our communication even internally between the executive is, has really ramped up as we you know, check on each other to make sure everybody's okay. Number one is as people and humans um, to make sure that friends and family are doing okay. Uh, and then to make sure that we're all kind of on the same page and, and moving in the same direction uh, as we look towards, you know, the, the coming weeks and months. Um, yeah, there really does put a focus on staying in touch. We, we here at SEA are doing very much the same remotely. Uh, we have three staff meetings a week, for example, Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday, uh, where we officially meet. And then, of course, there's the never-ending trail of calls and, and emails. Anyway, I'm sure it's much the same with you guys. Mm -hmm. The email, Lots of email, uh, the email, email airwaves must be just buzzing with, uh, with the amount of volume and traffic going through these days. All right. Um, your league, uh, like all leagues in Canada and, and really around the world, but your league here in Canada came to a screeching halt on the evening of uh, March the 12th when Hockey Canada made its uh, decision to suspend play right across the country. Tell, tell us how it's been for the league trying to deal with the suddenness of that and fan reaction, partner reaction, and how you're trying to stay relevant with your fans and your partners during the pause. Sure. I think like, like lots of other leagues, obviously, and, and even other businesses, uh, everybody felt that, <clears throat> excuse me, everybody felt that it was the right thing to do in terms of health and safety for, for fans, players, teams, staff. Um, so there was no question there that it was it was the right thing to do that that night and the following couple of days in March, and we were certainly, you know, trying to stay ahead of and, and lockstep with Hockey Canada and our our partners in the CGHL uh, on announcements and communication. Uh, obviously, players, you know, and teams and coaches and staff alike were disappointed that the that the season was canceled. Um, so disappointment would be the word that was kind of around then. Uh, but again, I don't think anybody would agree or would disagree in hindsight um, that it was the right thing to do uh, at the right time for, for all those reasons. Well, in, in the aftermath of it all, just to look at uh, things from the competition side a little bit for a moment, perhaps, um, the league's player of the year uh, was, in was in good standing to become the CGHL player of the year. He didn't uh, end up being selected, but it's just an honor to be in that, uh, in that consideration. But the head coach of the uh, Summerside Western Capitals, Billy McGuigan, became the first ever MHL coach to be the Canadian uh, Junior Hockey League Coach of the Year. Tell us a little bit about how, uh, how that came down for Billy. 
Yeah, very excited for Billy. Obviously a strong, a strong applicant, uh, a great season in Summerside, <clears throat> a great coach with lots of, lots of great credentials and a great track record. Uh, and this season was, was a special one for him and for that team. I spoke with Billy, I think probably the day after the announcement, I think there had been a parade uh, going by his house. So people driving by, obviously keeping their distance and honking their horns and, and saying congratulations to, to him from the community. Uh, so just a great honor for, for Billy and for the team. Yeah, that certainly made its round, uh, rounds on social media and, and how island-like, how Summerside-like for people to drive by the house and honk as they right. salute Billy. Uh, it's great. Um, the league obviously operates in the three maritime provinces, uh, and this province, Nova Scotia, has certainly had its share of, uh, of tragedy um, occurring almost in sequence uh, in recent weeks. The first of which was the, um, the horrific uh, death of 22 innocent souls at the hands of uh, one gunman. Uh, the league uh, activated itself very quickly to, to initiate a campaign. Would you tell us about that, Steve? Sure. It was, um, it was on the heels of, a, of another campaign that had been set up by one of our, one of our teams, the Fredericton Red Wings. Uh, they really wanted to take a look at how they could help kind of the frontline workers, people that were out there day to day, whether they were first responders, grocery store workers, uh, people working in, you know, retail service, gas stations, um, just those people out there trying to keep life as normal as they could. Uh, and then not too long after that campaign was started, uh, we had the tragedy here in Nova Scotia. Uh, so the board of governors uh, pivoted very quickly uh, and said, we need to do something for, for the victims of, of what happened here in Nova Scotia. Uh, so the Nova Scotia Victims Fund was was started. Uh, we've had a number of uh, of donations. Uh, one of our owners stepped up, Stu Roth from Truro, um, Maritime on the NHLers for Kids, uh, stepped up with a donation. Uh, and we've had some other donations that will announce uh, in the next week or so uh, from some of our partners. Uh, but again, just, you know, our teams are all about community. Uh, so we felt it was something that we needed to do for the community. Yeah, I think um, the outpouring of... Um... Uh, sympathy and respect and and caring is uh, is, is not uh, is not lost on on us all during such a tough time. Um, hard to say when play is going to start again. Um, what are some of the parameters that you're dealing with there in terms of health authorities, governing bodies, etc.? Yeah, so we'll we'll ultimately take our lead from from you know a combination of Hockey Canada probably uh, and the provincial health authorities, uh, with the provincial health authorities obviously being uh, the overriding <clears throat> decision on on return to play uh, we're meeting uh, at least weekly um, with the cghl with my counterparts across the country uh, hockey canada is stepping into each one of those meetings and giving us updates on where they are uh, and really right now whether you look at our league um, chl nhl everybody's really in this scenario planning right now uh, so you plan mm -hmm. for best case in september um, so what a normal start would be and then kind of work back from there uh, there are no answers yet at this point. Uh, we're just we're trying to do our best to plan for for all those scenarios uh, as we kind of look into the future. Yeah, I'm sure that's uh, the complexity of it all. Just opening venues again uh, has its uh, it has its complications for fandom. Never mind the uh, health and safety risk to players and staff and and those that are responsible for duties around a team. Um, right. So it's, it's not lost on anybody. It's in the business that these are very, very complex uh, scenarios to work through. I would um, say complex, Chris, certainly not insurmountable. Um, right. when, you've got, when you've got good people working on these scenarios and, and the support that we have from the hockey community, you know, in the Maritimes and beyond, um, mm. we're certainly very, you know, looking at it from a very positive and, and hopeful perspective. Uh, as we plan through those scenarios. And we've got a real committed group of owners and governors who you've, you've met all of them, um, very committed to their communities and to hockey. Uh, so that's, that's the lens that we're looking at the start of the season through. Well, the good segue if, uh, when you mentioned the start of the season, whenever that might be, uh, I'm not trying to put uh, the crystal ball in play here. So the, my point is more around when, when the league does come back to play, what is it that you can share with fans that they should expect from the Maritime Hockey League as it continues to redefine itself? Yeah, but, Chris, but I think, you know, we... This season, sorry. 
I think when you when you look ahead to when you start to look ahead, maybe take a quick look behind to see the the history and the legacy of the league. Uh, we've continued to improve the product on the ice. Uh, we've got um, again a a group of of committed owners, some new and some who have been around for a long time. Uh, a new you know new coaches uh, in the league who are who are passionate about developing their hockey skills as well as those of their players. Uh, and just uh, just a bright future ahead for for our teams and for our players in the MHL. Part part of that future um, is it's clear to see now will will um, will include the uh, the expansion of the number of sponsors and partnerships that the league is able to to bring together. Um, there are some great partners in place today with the league, uh, starting I suppose with Canadian Tire, a national iconic. Uh, hockey company for sure, sporting good company for sure. Um, how is it that you've been able to stay in touch with your, your partners and your sponsors during this? What are you hearing from them? Is there anything, uh, anything that's unfolding there that gives you cause for concern or does it, does it look like your partners are staying with you? We've got, as you said, Chris, and again, you know, lots of these guys too from, from the industry and from the Maritimes, we've got a group of real committed partners. Um, Canadian Tire, East Link, to name a few. Uh, and we're just, uh, you know, we keep in touch with them, um, making sure that they understand that, that we're planning ahead and, and making sure that they're engaged in, in those conversations as we move forward. One of them did something unique a weekend or so ago, I believe it was with Hockey TV, the rebroadcast of last year's uh, championship game between Miramichi and, and, and Yarmouth, or Camelton, sorry, my apologies, Camelton and Yarmouth. Um, and that was used as a, uh, set up as a fundraiser as well, I believe for the No Social Victims Fund, was it? That's right. They stepped up, uh, of their own accord and said, we'd like to do something to help. Um, so they created, we created some buzz around, around the game through various social media channels using yours, ours, and, uh, and, and Hockey Tech's, uh, social media platforms. Uh, they have come forward with, with a great donation. Uh, that we'll be sharing in the in the next week or so uh, again through through our through our channels. Um, we've also been been spending a lot of time with with that group uh, as they are going to help us with our draft in June. So our draft is going to go virtual. Um, middle of June, we'll start to announce some of those dates as well. Uh, but uh, Hockey Tech and Draft Center are going to be the the platforms we use to to do our draft the upcoming season. Um, a lot of industries, and a lot of businesses are finding the need uh, to do things differently because of the big pause, the great pause. But I think what, uh, what we also will come to understand is, is uh, that some of these ne necessary short-term solutions will become the way we do business going forward. Um, you see it's possible that the league could always have a virtual draft going forward. A number of leagues do it. Um, Hockey Tech has tried and tested technology um, that, that they use for a number of leagues. Um, it does some pretty neat things through the draft. Uh, it does allow us to kind of reach outward um, to fans uh, and people interested in the draft proceedings. Um, so I can certainly see this something that we would consider moving forward as we, as we move out of this pause, as you've called it. Pause, yeah. Um, we want to uh, wrap it up here. Thank you for you know, the time that you spent with us today, Steve, in our very first uh, Connecting Through Sport uh, video showcase series. Uh, best of luck in the upcoming season. And if you have uh, a final thought for your fans, uh, how about sharing that with, with us now? Yeah, I would just say that they should, hopefully they know or they should know that we're, we're planning ahead for the start of the season, uh, running every scenario that we can. Uh, and again, I can't say it enough. We've got a group of owners that are committed to hockey. Uh, their staff uh, are committed to hockey. I know that their communities are committed to hockey. Um, so we're looking forward to getting back into the rink again. Well, all the very best to the uh, Maritime Hockey League, and we'll be chatting soon. Thank you for this. Thanks, Chris. Thank you.